Okay, folks, so as you're all aware, as with uh, all us professionals, you know, uh, preparation <laughs> is everything. If you're a professional in any sport whatsoever, you simply must prep. So that's why we're focusing on Jamie now for this next bit. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jay, take it away. What are we doing, mate? A weird one and a bit of an in depth one. Yeah. Yeah, this is something I've touched on on a couple of little videos with Matrix before. Yeah. But we're going with everything loopy. You know what I mean? Loops are a big part of Is that why you got me here? Am I the loopy one? You're definitely like? the loopy aspect. <laughs> 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 so, but yeah, your loops. And more importantly, your hook length loops. And you're massive for it. These things, right folks, I've tried to use <laughs> these things so many times. <laughs> I was even doing them in the first lockdown. I was like, trying to use them. I'm like, how do you use them? So he sent me a video, Rich sent me a video, and I still can't get used to them. No, Rich sent you a very professional video for him, remember? He did, and he's no swearing involved either. No, it was, it was good. Rich. So, anyway, that's the first thing we're going to talk about, loop tyres. Go on. Yeah, there's a couple of variations in them. There's either the, the sensors jobbies, or there's the... There's there's little... that little spiky one, isn't there? Like the blue and red one? With yeah, like with the two, two prongs. Yes. No, the brass oh, things. That's the calibrated loop tyre what you're on about. But no, for me, the, the one with the disc and the two spikes, I think that's a SEMA one or something. I don't know. Great, that, that produces the same knot if you know how to use that. Great. If you're tying them by hand, like this bloke, Learn how to use a loop tire. They're just the consistent and the. They better. are, but it, I mean, it, it's one of them. Do you think it makes that much difference, Jay? Everything, because they're beautiful, and your loops a lot. What we're going to go into, your loops make a huge difference to how your rig performs, how your hook length performs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, okay. There's little things that make it good. Yeah. I mean, because it's the final link in making your hook bait look great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Other than your hook, of course. Yeah. So the loops have got to be right. So first thing for me, the sensors loop tires. It's the best bit of item in, so item tackle in my box. A bigger one and a littler one, then. Yeah. Two different size loops. Obviously. Yeah, I tend to go with the bigger one for me rig, for me Dacron and me to attach me up length. Because right, okay. it's the big one that um, goes through your, your band, goes through the big one, goes through your main line. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, your yeah. main line that your hook or your hook and a band is going to eventually go through when you're attaching your hook length. Mm -hmm. So I'd much rather use the larger one for on my actual rig. For all my hook lengths, I actually use the smaller one because nothing passes through that other than the line. Right, okay, yeah. So that's not an issue. So tying it, mega, mega, mega simple. I don't know if we're enough to zoom in on that. So I'm mean, going to double my line up. So I've got a great big loop. Yeah, really simple. Have that loop sticking away from my hands. I'm right-handed. So that loop's protruding from me, my finger and my thumb away from my hand. I've got this doubled up length of line here with a great big tag end on. I'm going to trap that there. So I've got this lovely doubled up length of line here. Nice and easy to find. I'm literally going to scoop that up right into the, the crook of the loop tyre. Hold it tight and twizzle it twice. Yeah, and then with the loop which is protruding there, I can just put that in the little slot there, which goes in beautiful. And then holding the two, pull it nice and down so it just fixes onto your loop tyre like that. Next, I'm just going to push it. And what it'll do, it'll rotate off the loop tyre and make a loop absolutely perfectly. And it does that every single time. Does yeah. it, folks? It does. Once you get it why right, so you've got another you video to look at now. Why ain't you wet did it in it? I'd, I'd already given it a gods, and for this, oh, it's not okay. nice. Give no, another. Not but I would have. Right. Yeah, okay. before I pulled it really tight, I'd give it a bit of a spit. Just and that's to make the big sure. loop. That's the big loop. See, that's like my small loop, folks, and most of my. Yeah. <laughs> right, so that's proper. Lovely, yeah, it's subtle, keeps yeah, it nice. And the smaller your loops as well, because you've only got two, two nice little loops, yeah. they only cover a tiny little bit of the rig. See how quick Yeah. They're only covering what you're going to give me for that loop 10 mil. Yeah, so you've only got 20 mil of your rig that's a double yeah, length yeah. line that's making it look nice. So tying it, that's the easy bit. Yeah, all done. The next thing for me, once your loops is tied, is making it, is keeping it nice. So it's been nice on, on the winder now. Yeah, nice. looking after it on your winder. Right, so okay. we spend that much time making rigs. Yeah. That I'm a bit different because I don't shot mine, but most people are going to shot the rigs. So the loop has to stay. You can't I've, retie that loop. I've gone on to how you do yours. You put like loop at the top. Obviously, float on, loop at the bottom, put it on the winder, don't you? Yeah, definitely. So if I need to, because I just have a float on a piece of line, if I'm, if I'm not happy with that loop, I can retie it on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But retying a loop is never quite as nice because because we use quite heavy main lines. For for me and yourself, yeah, yeah. all our main lines are 15 plus. Yes, definitely. Very rare we go any less mm. than that, isn't it? And a fresh loop in anything 015 and above tends to stay a little bit fat. Mm. You know what I mean? But I'll come on to fixing that in a minute. So what I want to do is store it on my winder. Yeah, if you've got your rig ready shotted, obviously your loop's in that fixed place. Yeah, most winders now, they'll either have these two prongs at the top end. Yeah, for me, the loop does not go anywhere near them. Because if you were to store a loop on those fixed winders at the top, let me pass that on there, and keep that under tension, which it's going to be, of course, as it's stored in your box, what you find is that you have a curve in your loop. Mm. 
because it's there for a length of time, it gets a bit of memory and it, it actually, your loop sits in a cave, which once you attach a hook length to it, it's not sitting straight. No, no, no. I mean, really, really bad, especially with them uh, thicker lines. So it always needs to be stored on either a proper storage pin like the Matrix ones have, or if not, if you've just got a hole with a staple, a folded over staple. Is that what them little spiky things are for? That's what they're for. Right. You're putting your loop on. Oh, so these ones are for like your pole anchors, aren't they're they? For, they? They're for, they're not Mate, right, now. every day is just a school day. You are home learning me, <laughs> Sorry, I'm schooling you. <laughs> That's what it needs to be to be stored on. The actual hook length loop that is, it, it pulls the loop straight. There's no kicking over the loop. I honestly yeah. never knew what it <laughs> And by keeping it tight, I'll just yeah. put my loop on the spikes on that. No, we're not supposed to. <laughs> They're from 1980s. Oh, right, okay. whole, like, whole so is that like why, like, when I have two two uh, rigs on one wind, I've got to pull one out and I've got, like, the line of the other loop. All wrapped around. All wrapped around it. I'm like, no, so I'll put that one back on and get the other one out. I always get the wrong one out. Makes sense now. Right. Ding! Light bulb moment, Jake. Okay, right. okay. So, yeah, your loop's got to be kept straight. <laughs> yeah, the straighter that loop is, the better it looks when it's in the water, yeah? That's amazing. So, next thing, that's what I want to lead on to next, which I'm knackered up because I've not tied one. So, let me tie oh, one really me. quick. So, I've got that one ready. What am I going to do? I'm going to bite. In fact, I can, I can steal this one. Steal the one at the top end. So what are you showing now? So that's come off the winder. Next, it's attaching them right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, mate. How, how often do we do this in coaching? Oh, huge. I always it? ask, how do you put your, your hook length on loop to loop? Yes. And they always put, well, you're going to show it now. The, the, do, the the right way way. do the wrong way first. Do the wrong way first. Well, let me do the wrong way with, I've, I've got some spare loops here that I've tied big loops. Yeah, so I've got two loops. Yeah, the wrong way would yes. be the one in, the, in my right hand. Yeah, that is my main line. Main line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the wrong way would be to put the hook length through the main line and then to put the hook through the hook length. Yes. Yeah, because that is a, a, as a, what is it? It's a strangulation knot, because yeah. this loop stays the same, whereas you can see it's only the one loop that's splicing into the other one. And it always sort of kinks off when well, it It's because it kicks things, off like that. Yeah. You horrible. see that, Rich? And it's, it's weak as well, isn't it? Yeah, it it's always makes off. it kick off. Yes. And if you've got that with a curly loop as well, if you'd stored it wrong on your winder, <laughs> your hook length's going that way. Yes. Yeah, horrendous. Well, that might be a fist coming in from that direction. It really looks you know nasty. I mean? So that's if you do it the wrong way. That's with your, your hook length through the main line, and then you hook through the hook length loop. Yeah. Completely wrong, because it's just the bottom loop, your hook length, that is constri it's constricting. It's how it splays out as well, isn't it, like that? Yes, you know I mean? it just kicks it off. It's not yeah. nice. And that's with O15 as well, so it just looks horrendous. Mm. If we do it correctly, she'll do it with the sexy one, she'll do it with the little one, so it looks really yeah, nice. Boy. Get on it, Jake. If I do it correctly, so Here I have the go. main line, goes through your hook length, where is it? Main line goes through the hook length, and then the hook goes through the main line, which is why yes. I use that bigger loop tire yeah, I like that. on the main line loop, because if I have a band on that, yeah. then I want it to go through a little bit easy without me having to mess about. And what that does, no glasses on, they splice together. So the two knots, instead of one constricting the other, they're actually working together, and they fasten together lovely there, like you can see. And because of that, stronger, they stay in a straight line. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're all nice. Yeah. And they if all you want fit, to, you get them, get them apart, couldn't you just If, if you need them? to, yeah, you, you never would. Do you know what I mean? Once it's been pulled in tight, yeah, it's yeah. staying there forever. But it keeps it so much nicer. Love it. Yeah, a nice straight, uh, fluent piece of line going through that's not kicking off at all. On the subject that, just while I'm touching on that as well, while I'm looking at it, something I find massively important is this knot in particular, the top, the top loop that's actually fixed to me main line. That's the one loop that I always ensure is trimmed down as low as possible. You've shouted at me a few times for that. I, I, I like to leave mine, you know, what we're saying, three, three mil, two or three mil or something like yeah. that. But it, it does happen. Yeah, when you it wraps it, over it Yeah, yeah. all the time. Often your hook line must be falling yeah. and it must catch in that little, especially, little V there where the line's kicking out. Especially when you're lifting and dropping, folks. You know, laying it out's all right. You can see everything nice and yeah, tight. Straight. But when you're lifting and dropping, like a full float out, drop it straight. Yeah, your shots go down, then your, your, your bait's behind it, isn't it? It comes back yeah, over the Yeah, a little spiky bit your rig yeah, can get yeah, caught yeah. in so easy, so I want to get rid of that. Yeah. I mean, it's as flush as I can get that within reason, really, really important. The one below it, not quite as bad, because it's going the opposite way, it's not yeah. going to bother, but the, your top loop, make sure that's trimmed down as flush as possible. So the last little thing I want to touch on is dropper position, where I'm putting my droppers as well. But something I play about with a lot is where I put my dropper in relation to my loops. Yeah, because these days of using three, four, five, six inch hook lengths, it's very, very rare you put anything on your hook length anymore. Mm. But what a... To be what, fair, I've never ever done it anyway, Jay. I know you have, you're massive for it in yeah, the past, but I've never ever done it. So I just use short hook lengths now most yeah. of the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, 
if I'm using a three inch, I can get it nice mm -hmm. and close. But what I did used to, what I still do quite often, is that if I'm using really light lines, if I'm using silverfish rigs, I don't mind putting my first hook length right underneath the hook length knot, because it straightens those loops out if you've got sort of about 12 shot, to about 10. Shot on the hook length. Maybe. Yeah, put a shot just on the hook length. Right, okay. Because yeah, it, yeah. it's a bit of weight to straighten that hook length out if you're using like 08 to 012. Yeah. Or 012 to 08. If I'm using heavier line, like it, with all my commercial rigs, they're going to be 015, 017, 019, that sort of thing, main line to an 013 hook length. So it's going to be quite a big difference between them. In that case, what I do is my last dropper often goes on the loops. I definitely need glasses for this one. <laughs> on the loops of my main line. Surprised you're not swallowing them all, Jay. Surprised they're not all yeah. stored in his mouth. They, they, they probably are. Like normal. Yeah, the, the air puck goes mad. Let's obviously wear that. That's just under the knot, but on my loop. Yeah? Oh, right, I get you. Yeah, and yeah, what it does, yeah, yeah. It, with your yeah. thicker lines, with your, your 015 pluses, it closes your loop up. Yes. Because they do just want to. They, 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 they wanna do open with the size of my loops, mate. Yeah, they're like, eee, yes. probably sticking out. And it just helps keep that loop closed yeah, like up that. as much as possible. And what I can do is, if I do lose my up length, and I've got to take my up length off, I can just slide that shot off because it'll come off nice and easy because it's only that last little bit. Yeah. Replace my up length and then replace the shot. Nice. Yeah, it takes a little bit. I mean, it adds 10 seconds on to replacing yeah, the hook length. Nothing knows it. But it, that's the thing, yeah. It yeah, makes it look that. better by closing them loops up. So just little things that make, for me, little differences. Clever, mate, always thinking. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, I know going off a bit what you were to talk about, but shots as opposed to stops, it's one of them as well, isn't it? Yeah, we spoke about that loads. I mean, the, the shot gang, they go on and stay on. Yes, 100%. Yeah, I like that, Jay. Nice little things that make your rig a little bit better. Get some mm. disgorges, folks. Mm. <laughs>